blessings, everyone. The Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless, bless us all. And we like to say happy and blessed Sabbath day to everyone, even though our people might understand, might not understand that it. it's the seventh day Sabbath. We still say blessed Sabbath. The Lord will our people come to an understanding on the Sabbath about Christ, the Heavenly Father, who we are, the Israelites. All things in due time. So let's begin by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that standeth on the right hand of the Father. And uh, we're going to begin Luke 4 16. <clears throat> Most high in Christ, bless you, Israel. All praises for the scriptures. Peace and blessings to your home. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth. Where he had been threw up, brought up. Sorry. Right. right, so now we're reading about the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, while he was on the earth. He, he came to the city where he grew up from a child. And that city was called the city of Nazareth, which was a city in the territory of Galilee, in the northern part of Israel. So Christ is now at his hometown, amongst the people that he grew up with, people that knew him ever since he was young. See? So let's continue. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And as his custom was. And as his custom was, meaning as the Lord customarily did. Read on. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath. So the day. Lord went into the synagogue on the what, brother? On the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day. So Christ went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day Sabbath. So what Sabbath day are we talking about here? What Sabbath day is the scripture talking about? The Sabbath day Sabbath. Let's get it. Exodus 20 and 8. The <clears throat> Sabbath day Sabbath. We're going to read it in Exodus 20, but read verse 1. Exodus 20, verse 1. And God speak all these words. And God spake all these words. Read on. Saying. Saying. See? So what we're reading here is Exodus chapter 20. And in this chapter contains the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments were spoken by who? God. So these very same commandments that Moses would teach the children of Israel throughout his ministry were the commandments that God gave him to teach the children of Israel. So now let's read verse 8 because now we're going to read about the Sabbath, the same Sabbath that Christ kept as a custom according to the law that's written in Exodus 20 and 8. So let's read that. Exodus 20 verse 8. Remember. The Sabbath day. So the Most High, when he spoke the Ten Commandments, like it tell us, I just want to bring this point out, brother. Uh, Second Ezra 3, I'll read it. Very powerful scene. Because we read where it said, and God spake all these words, saying. And then we're reading up to the part where it says, remember the Sabbath day to what? To keep it holy. So we're always to keep in remembrance the seven day Sabbath. That's why I told us, as, as the custom of Christ was, he went into the synagogue, the place where Israel would come to worship, to pray and hear the word of God. In the synagogue, he went there on the Sabbath. So he was keeping in remembrance and being obedient to the Father's commandment of remembering the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. So I wanted to add a scripture to go with that. And that'll be in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3. 2nd Ezra, chapter 3. And I want to read verse 19. So it says, And thy glory went through four gates. So this is the glory of the Father when he spoke the Ten Commandments. Of fire. So when you read in Deuteronomy 5, it adds to it that this fire that appeared in Mount Sinai, as God spoke the Ten Commandments, went all the way up into the midst of heaven. So imagine a fire, right? At Mount Sinai, 
as God is speaking the Ten Commandments, and this fire go all the way up into the midst of heaven. We saw that with our eyes. Then it says, and of earthquake. So the earth was trembling. Now everybody is in great fear when there's an earthquake, you fear for your life. So Israel, we were in great fear and reverence and awe of the power of the Most High when he spoke these commandments. And of wind. So the presence of wind came from the presence of God. So you had the element of fire, you had the earth trembling, and there was a wind that was blowing through the air. Spirit of the Most High, right? And then it says, and of cold. <laughs> so there's a fire that's going up to the midst of heaven. The earth is trembling. There's a wind and there's a cold frigidness to the air. As the Most High speaking, the Ten Commandments, including this commandment, the, re to the remembrance to keep the Sabbath day. And it said, and the law unto the seed of Jacob. See? So the Ten Commandments and the rest of the law was given unto the seed of Jacob. Who is the seed of Jacob? The 12 tribes of Israel, our forefathers, right? Then it said, and diligence unto the generation of Israel, meaning the Most High commanded us to diligently observe, follow, and take heed to his commandments to prosper to have good success in life on all levels health family marriage parenting relationships all levels so all praise to the most high christ that we endured that now when do we just read in exodus 20 and 8 one more time brother exodus 20 verse 8 Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's right. So we're always to keep a remembrance the seven day Sabbath. We're to keep it holy. How do we keep it holy? We're going to read. Let's continue. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. For six days we're to labor and do all our work. So the first day of the week begins when the sun sets today. Because we're in the seventh day. Today is the Sabbath day. Today is the seventh day. When the sun sets today, that is the beginning of the first day of the week. And for six days, we're supposed to do all our works and all our labor. So whatever, whatever our occupation is, whatever our job is, we have six days to do all that. So we could be a mechanic, a carpenter, we could build houses, whatever it is. You could be a farmer. We have six days to do all our works and all our labor. So whatever job we have, we have six days to do that, right? Continue, brother. Exodus 20, verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the seventh day of the week, so from Sunday, Saturday night, to Sunday night, that's one day. So you got Sunday, so-called Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, six day of the week. When the sun sets on so-called Friday, that's the beginning of the seventh day Sabbath, right? In that day, the seventh day, thou shalt not what? In it, thou shalt not do any work. So remember, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So how do we keep it holy? By abstaining and refraining ourselves because we fear God and we tremble at his word and we love God we're going to refrain from what? Doing any work. Because we got six days to do all, all our works and our labors. But the seventh day, the seventh day seven, in it thou shalt not do any work. Read on. Nor thy son. Thou, nor thy what? Thy son. Thou, nor thy son. So read the part where it says from thou. What's here? Yep. Thou. Thou. See, we, as the people of Israel, the men of Israel, read on. Thou. Thou thy son. Thou nor thy son. Read on. Nor thy daughter. Nor thy daughter. So the sons and daughters of Israel, they also had to keep the Sabbath. So the father is the example. It's the Sabbath. Household and family. You gotta keep it holy. So the father sets the tone for the house. He teaches his children. 
to. Not only keep the Sabbath, but we also got to what? Prepare for the Sabbath. Because we can't keep the Sabbath if we didn't prepare for the Sabbath. How do we prepare for the Sabbath to keep it? Well, we do all our buying and selling, our cooking, our cleaning, tidying up around the house, cleaning about the house, cooking our food, so that on the Sabbath, we're not what? Doing any works or labor. Because we're going to read other laws that's tied to this, where we couldn't, we could not kindle a fire to cook on the Sabbath, couldn't do business on the Sabbath. See? So that's all part of keeping the Sabbath day home. Christ, as his custom was, followed this ordinance, right? And on the Sabbath day, he would go to the synagogue, right? the places where Israel would come to worship. The synagogues were all throughout the land of Israel. In Jerusalem, Judea, you had uh, synagogues in Galilee, all the way in the northern part of Israel. You even had, during the time of Christ and the apostles, synagogues scattered throughout all, wherever Israel was scattered throughout the world. And on the Sabbath day and the other Sabbath days, Israel would come together and what? They would come together to fellowship because the high holy days are not only Sabbaths, but they're also convocations, places where we gather. And we would also come together to hear the reading of the word of God, the commandments being taught. We would worship God, we would pray to God. So Christ on the Sabbath, he, he would go to the synagogues, keep the Sabbath. According to Exodus 20. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, read on. Thy manservant. Nor thy maidservant. The maidservants. So if you had servants, maidservants, they couldn't work on the Sabbath. So what does that mean? Like let's say we have maidservants in our homes. Or people that we may hire to do work for us. On the Sabbath day, you have to be able to give them that day off. You wouldn't put to work a maid servant, nor a what? Nor thy maid servant. Right. A ma nor, so it said, nor thy man, right, sir? Oh yeah. Man servant, nor thy maid servant. So the man servants and maid servants, they couldn't be put to work. They had, you had, they were able to, uh, they were able to be uh, allowed to keep the Sabbath and be refreshed, because that's one of the blessings of keeping the Sabbath. to be able to be refreshed from our works and labor. Our body and our mind need that rest one day out of that week. Some days in the week we might have more than this, uh, one holy day or Sabbath to keep. There might be a new moon that week, first day of the Passover, unleavened bread, or the... But for the most part, six days we do our works and labor, seventh day, Sabbath, day of rest, keep it holy. We didn't work, Wife didn't work, sons and daughters, even men servants and maid servants. They didn't work on the Sabbath. See? So why are we teaching this? Because Christ kept the Sabbath. And if Christ kept the Sabbath, should we not be keeping the Sabbath day as well? Yes, we should. Because what is being a Christian all about? The scripture says, if any man suffer, let him suffer as a what? A Christian. See? So what is it? What does it mean to be a Christian? To be a follower of Jesus Christ. Christ kept the Sabbath. We keep the Sabbath. Some people say, well, we don't got to keep the Sabbath because that's the law of Moses. We don't have to follow the law of Moses. We follow Christ. What did Exodus 21 say? And what? God, right? And, yeah, and God spake all these words. So who, who gave Israel... The commandment to keep the Sabbath day holy, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. So it's not the law of Moses, it's the commandment of God. And 1 John 5 and 3 says, But this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. But for a lot of our people, because we don't want to put on the pleasures of sin for a season, and we want to be able to do some blessings. We want to be able to fill the book fulfill our lust but keeping the Sabbath is grievous it's like, oh man I don't want to rest on the Sabbath I want to do this I want to buy and sell I want to work out I want to play basketball I want to go to the gym I want to cook I want to buy on the Sabbath I want to we have to put all that off we have to repent one of the things that Christ taught actually the first words that came out of his mouth that's recorded when he 
began his ministry was to what? Repent. <laughs> what does repent mean? To turn from sin. What is sin? First John 3 and 4 tell us the transgression of God's commandments. So if we're breaking the Sabbath, we're living in sin. So how do we repent? Learn the commandments on the Sabbath, repent to the Lord, and now keep it. Some people, oh no, we can't keep it. Uh, it's impossible to keep the Sabbath. First John 5 and 3 says his commandments are not grievous. <laughs> but what makes it grievous? The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes. That's what gets in the way and hinders us from keeping something that's of a benefit for our spiritual well-being and spiritual well-being. How does it become grievous? Only through our own lust or taking heed to darkness that can to our lust like this world's Christianity which teaches us that we don't have to keep the, the Sabbath day holy or keep any of God's commandments. And, and that's a lie straight up from the devil. So we got a lot of repenting to do. Nonetheless, let's keep reading, brother. Where we at? Exodus 20 and what? 9? 10, not really. 10 verse? Okay. Yeah. Again. Exodus 20, verse 10. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of who? Of the Lord thy God. Of the Lord thy God. So the Sabbath day came from who? The Most High and Jesus Christ. Christ instituted the seventh day Sabbath. Not in Exodus 20, but the end of creation of heaven and earth. Because Jesus Christ was with God before the world was. So when the heavens and the earth were being created in six days, Christ created the heavens and the earth in six days by the power and authority of the Father. Because that's what the Sabbath day commemorates. Let's read on to prove that. In it, in it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou, thou, nor thy son, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy cattle. Even our cattle had to rest on the Sabbath from working in the fields. Read on. Nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Nor thy nor the stranger that is within thy gates. So the other nations that would be sojourning in our land on the seventh day Sabbath, they also had to keep the Sabbath. They were not going to come up in our land and on the Sabbath day set up tables and buy, I mean, sell victuals and wear or, or anything for that matter. Who? They couldn't do that on the Sabbath. They couldn't work on the Sabbath. They couldn't sell to us on the Sabbath. They had to keep the Sabbath as long as they were sojourning as strangers in our land. So even though the nations in our land had to keep the Sabbath. Read on. Exodus 20, verse 11. Now we're going to go back to the point that was made a moment ago about the, the institution of the Sabbath. Let's read on. For in six days, for in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. For in six days, the Lord God through Jesus Christ made the heaven and the earth. So everything in the visible heaven and everything here on earth, visible and invisible, and invisible was created in six days. So in six days, the heaven and the earth was created. Read on. The Lord made heaven and earth. The Lord made the heaven and earth. The sea. The sea. And all that is in, all that is them is. And all that in them is. So everything that we see with our eyes in the visible heavens, everything that we see here on the earth, everything on the earth, Adam and the rest of mankind, male and female, the creation of all the plants of the earth, the lands of the earth, all the creatures of the earth, the fowls of the earth, the, the, the animals in the oceans, the creatures in the ocean, the birds in the sky, the cattle, insects, all everything heaven and in earth was created in six days. Read on. And rested the seventh day. So God and Christ rested from their creation of heaven and earth in six days and rested on the seventh day. Where do we read about that? Any more on that? Go ahead. Wherefore, wherefore, the Lord 
blessed the Sabbath day. So and, the Most High blessed the Sabbath day and what? And hallowed it. And hallowed it, meaning he sanctified it and made it holy. Let's go to Genesis 2 and 1. So when was the seventh day Sabbath instituted? At the end of creation of heaven and earth in six days. And then on the beginning of the Sabbath day, the seventh day, the Lord God and Jesus Christ that was with God in the creation and actually created all things rested from their works and labor. And Christ, by the power and authority of God, instituted the seven day Sabbath. That's why he kept the Sabbath. <laughs> it's fitting that the Lord on the Sabbath keep the Sabbath because he instituted it. We'll get that point too. But let's read on. Genesis 2 and 1. Genesis 2 and 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Right. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. So now this is the end of the six days. The heavens, the earth was finished in the creation. Of these of, of heaven and earth in six days, read on. And all the hosts of them. And all the hosts of them, all the hosts of heaven, read on. Verse 2. The sun and the moon and what's called as the stars, right? Everything here on the earth, read on. And on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, read on. God ended his work. God ended his work. Which he had made. Which he had made. Any more in there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And he rested on the seventh day. From all his work which he had made. Right. So understand the context of the word God and the institution of the Sabbath. It's talking about the most high God and Jesus Christ. Now people are, wait, 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 say God. Where you get Jesus Christ out of there? Well, go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. It says, and God said, and God said, let us, let us make man in our image. Make man in our image. So this is on the sixth day. God said, let us make man in our image. So is that singular or plural? Is us one or plural? Singular or plural? Plural. And God said, meaning. God said to Jesus. Now we didn't we didn't get Jesus yet, but we're gonna get there in a moment. But we're gonna bring out the context. It's God speaking to Christ. Let us make what? Man in our, our minutes. Make man in our what? Image. Our, our minutes. In our in our and say owner our. Our image. Our image, right. So let us make man in our image. And what? After our likeness. After our likeness. So now there was a, a man that was to be created. That was supposed to be in the image and likeness. As a representation of God and Christ. Who is that man? Adam. Read on. It says, and let them have dominion. And let them have dominion, meaning rulership. So it's talking about Adam and the rest of mankind, male and female. Read on. Over the fish of the sea. Over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. Over the fowl of the air. See, so the, the, the Most High created new Christ. The fowl of the air and the fishes of the ocean and all of the creation. Man was to have dominion over that. Ruling by the word, the power of God, the commandments of God. To be able to discern each animal. Adam actually named the animal. Name the lands. Among these animals, what's clean, what's unclean. Every animal had its purpose. Just like every insect, every bird, every fowl, every cattle, all of creation. It's all for a purpose. Perfectly in balance in the beginning. So what do we read there? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So we're reading there that there's more than one in the creation of heaven and earth. So from there, let's go to um, John chapter 1 and verse 1. Is that with that? Yes, sir. John chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> John chapter 1, verse 1. 
In the beginning. In the beginning. So now we're going back to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. So when you read that word, Word, there's a, a bold case or bold W. Because it's talking about Christ. In the beginning was Christ. Read on. And the Word. And Christ, the Word, read on. Was with God. Was with God. And how we know that the Word is talking about Christ, just to get a scripture. This is Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open. So the apostle John on the island of Patmos saw a vision of the heaven open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him, meaning the person that sat upon the white horse, was called faithful and true. Both the word faithful and true is capitalized. F and the T. Because those are both words that are being used to describe Jesus Christ. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. <laughs> That's Christ. <laughs> His eyes were as a flame of fire, like I said in Revelation 1, 13, 14, 15. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. So John the, John, the apostle John saw a vision of the Lord sitting on his white horse, and his garment was described as being dipped in what? Blood. Because we just read that he gonna come to bring war. He, in righteousness, he judge, he doth judge and make war. When Jesus Christ come back, he gonna judge the world. And he gonna bring war. Because Christ is coming back with thousands and thousands of his angels to render unto every man according to his works that he has rendered. The works of, rent, of men shall be rendered unto them in the day of judgment. And when Christ is done bringing that judgment and war, his, John is describing Jesus' garment as being dipped in blood. <laughs> so the second coming of Christ is no joke. That's right. Then it says, and his clothes was as, as with, with a and his clothes with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. So Christ is the Word. So when we were reading in John 1, read that again. Who is that talking about? Jesus Christ. It says. The same John is describing Jesus as the Word. In John 1 and 1 and Revelation 19 and uh, I think it was the 13th verse. So let's read on, brother. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God. And Jesus Christ was with God. See? So when we read in Genesis 1, 26, and God said... Let us make man in our image understand the context of that word God. It's talking about the most high and cross. <laughs> Read on, brother. And the word was God. And the word was God. Meaning Christ was a power. Because that word, when you read it in, in Genesis 1, 26, the context is powers. The powers. Who are the powers? Most high in Christ. Because Christ and the Father are one. Two separate entities that agree together in one, like Christ said in John 5. The Father and I work of hitherto. Christ said on the Sabbath day, every day, me and my Father, we work together. So when the Lord healed that man on the Sabbath day, and they found fault with that, found fault with that, he said, the work that I'm doing is the work of the Father. Me and my Father work together. Because they had a law, the Pharisees in place, that you couldn't heal on the Sabbath. Christ is like, what? Day, the Sabbath is a day, day is a day to be refreshed. See? So it's fitting that the Lord heal a man and give rest unto a man from the bondage of sickness on the Sabbath day. But the Pharisees found fault with that. Because they were self-righteous. They made their own law and added to the law. Burdens grievous to be born that they would not live with one of their fingers. But yet they didn't even keep the, the regular laws pertaining to the Sabbath, but yet they add to this to men. Why? So that they can rule over you. So they the Lord of the Sabbath. When Christ said, no, the Son of Man, he's Lord also of the Sabbath. I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. And when he said that, that went over their heads. Because they didn't realize that when Christ said that, what he was saying is, I instituted the Sabbath. He said that in Mark chapter 2, verse 23. 
the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So he created the heavens and earth as the Lord in six days. And in the seventh day, he said, I'm also the Lord of the Sabbath. He created heaven and earth in six days. And oh, by the way, he instituted the Sabbath on the seventh day. That's why he's the Lord. Now we see why David called him Lord in Psalm 110 and 1. Now we see why Mary Magdalene, when she saw the Lord risen on the first day of the week, she said she called him Lord. Now we see why the disciples asked the Lord, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The two blind men that knew that Jesus Christ was going to walk by them, what did they say? Lord, have mercy upon us, O Lord, thou son of David. Because they knew that the son of David was the Christ and Messiah of Israel. So they referred to Jesus as what? Jesus of Nazareth that was born in Bethlehem of Judah as what? The Lord. Why is he the Lord? Genesis 2. 1. Genesis 2. From the first scripture of the Bible, we read about Christ. We read about God. What's the first scripture in the Bible? Real quick. Just hold that, brother. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 and 1. It says, Genesis chapter 1 and 1. The in, first scripture of the Bible. Read on. In the beginning. In the beginning. God. God meaning God in Christ. Created the heaven and earth. There you go. The first scripture. The, the last scripture of the Bible, right? I'll read it, brother. Or you can read it. Read the very last scripture in the Bible. God in Christ, Jesus, the Son of God, is in the first scripture of the Bible, and he's in the last. That's why he says, search the scriptures. For they are written of me. Read the, last, read the chapter, in the, uh, actually, yeah, the 2021. Yeah, because these are the last words that Christ spoke that's recorded. The last, uh, uh, Revelation 22 and 20. Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. He which testified it, these things said. See, so John testified of, of what Christ said. Read on. Surely I come quickly. That's the last recorded words of Jesus Christ in the scriptures. Surely I come what? Quickly. And when he comes back, he does judge and make what, brother? War. And when he comes back, his, his garment going to look like it was dipped in blood because it's going to be dipped in blood. Because Christ is coming to judgment must first begin with the house of God. And then the Lord going to get his hands on, like I said in 149, the kings and rulers of this world, they're going to be killed with the edge of the sword in the day of judgment. Because Christ is coming to judge every man according to his works, whether they were good or evil. Even the men that were pierced Christ and crucified him, they're going to be risen from the dead and they're going to be judged for what they did. They tell us that in Revelation chapter 2, that those that pierced them shall see in the resurrection. So, surely I come quickly, read on. Surely I come quickly, amen. Amen, read on. Even so, come Lord Jesus. That's, that's right, that, we can't wait. That's why as believers in Christ, we do what's called the communion. Where we commemorate by eating unleavened bread and drinking red wine, our Lord's death till he what? Till he comes. And when he comes, he gonna come like a thief in the night. He coming quickly. People been, oh, people been saying that for 2,000 years already and he ain't coming. He ain't coming, man. I don't believe in the Bible. But we have to be long suffering and patient because what's a thousand years to us is one day to the Lord. <laughs> so, just because it's not in our lifetime don't mean that he's not coming quickly. Our life is like a vapor of smoke that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. We deal in the time of God. God's time is not like our time. Our time is, look man, I've been following the Lord for 20 years of my life. I'm ready. You ready? Well, Abraham died in the faith over 2,000 years ago and he didn't come in his time. But he died in the faith though. Lord ain't got to come in our lifetime for us to believe in him or wait, wait for this to come to pass. If we got to die in the faith, we got to do like John said. We're going to die in this faith. Go ahead, brother. Revelation 22, verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So from the first scripture of the Bible, when we read about God, that means God in Christ, to the last verse we read about Christ. That's why John, Jesus Christ said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, meaning you know you have eternal life. And they are they, meaning the scriptures from Genesis 
Now all the way to Revelation, they are they which testify of what? Me. <laughs> so let's go back to John chapter one and where do we leave off, brother? Let me read one again. Okay, brother. John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. Right? Remember we read in Genesis 1, we read about God. That's God in Christ. So in the beginning was Christ. Read on. And the word was with God. And the word was with God, meaning Jesus Christ was with the Heavenly Father. Read on. And the word. And how do we know that? Because in Genesis 1, 26, it said, And God said, Let us make man in our image. God said to Christ, the word. Now we created what we created thus far is the sixth day. Now it's time to create man. That's going to have dominion over the creation. We're going to make this man in our likeness and image. So by Adam being created, Adam is a representation, an image, a likeness of the heavenly father. That's why we were not to murder. What does Genesis 9 and 6 say? Let's get that point. Hold that John 1 and 1. Read Genesis chapter 9 and let's read verse 6. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. What is that? The Sabbath day. You can't escape it, Israel. From Genesis to Revelation, the seventh day Sabbath. We read about it. Uh, Genesis chapter 9? Yes, sir. 9 and 6. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood. Whoso sheddeth man's blood. Remember now, man was created in the image and likeness of God. So when he created man, he gave man a law. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, this is one sin entered into the world. See, man was made upright. But once that sin entered into the world by the serpent deceiving Eve and Adam, sin entered into the world. So the most I gave a warning. Read that again. Whoso sheddeth man's blood. Whoso sheddeth man's blood. What is that talking about? Murder. What's rampant among our people? Murder. Drive-by shootings. Selling drugs is murder. Human trafficking leads to what? Murder. Because human trafficking leads to organ harvesting. To harvest those organs, <laughs> you got to first steal the person, kidnap them. That's against the law, Exodus 21, I believe 16. He that stealeth the man, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So, and that's a big thing out here in Arizona, especially here in Phoenix. They hire a lot of these young brothers out here to go close to the border. And then you have the drug cartels. They, uh, they get the, uh, the people that they've abducted. Some of them are little children and women, and they sneak them over the border. And then you got the brothers that's out here in Phoenix. They'll drive and meet the coyotes on this side of the border. And then they take them to wherever the drug cartels are going to meet them here on this side. And what do they do with them kids? Where do you think what happens to these kids? Especially for you so-called Hispanics, y'all want the borders open. Man, for the betterment of our people, it's better to trust in the Lord than to come over here and have these aspirations come over here and then you trying to sneak the, over the border and your children take it from you. The government sent the children, the parents back and they take the children in custody here. What do they do with the children? Oregon harvesting, they're sexually abused, physically abused, and most they put on medication. The organs are harvesting. That's murder, man. And that's a big thing out here in Phoenix. Big time. So you got a lot of our people involved in this. We have to repent from this. Let's read on, man. It's sad, it's horrible what happens to our people. Them little children are traumatized for life. Physically abused, sexually abused, uh, shipped from, shipped to Canada and all different parts of the world. Human trafficking is a multi-billion dollar industry. And we got to be hearing the word like the people that was there during the John the Baptist time. John was reproving the people that had, that were putting people in fear. He said, do violence to no man. Put no man in fear. 
Be content with your wages. Exact no more than that which is appointed you to, to take from the people when you collect taxes from them. Because you have people that had these occupations, some of them, they were doing unlawful things. That's why a lot of people that get caught up in the human traffic, a lot of these be cops. That's down with it. And we shouldn't be afraid to speak these words because these are words of truth. And our people must repent from this, that they may be saved. So let's read on, brother. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Whoso shed a man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. So Mosai gave a warning. You shed man's blood, by man is your blood going to be shed. And usually it would be the nearest of kin that would avenge the death of his brother, his family member. So Mosai put that in there as a warning. But why did he say that? Read on. For in the image of God made he man. For in the image of God made he what? Man made them. So when you see your brother, you're supposed to see what? God. Not you see your brother, I want his sneakers, I'm gonna kill him. You see a, 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 a woman, oh, I want to lust, I want to sleep with her. You want to uh, fornicate with her. You see young children, oh, I'm going to physically abuse them, emotionally abuse them. I'm going to take these children and I'm going to uh, put them in a van and I'm going to bring them, working for the drug cartels, to bring them over to these, whoever, so-called Jews, other nations, and then them people use their, take, kill them, take their organs, so that what? People, a lot of, there's a lot of young people that need kidneys, heart transplants, different organs. That's, that's why the Biden ministry allow, uh, so the people open up the borders, man, it ain't to give them freedom and stuff. There's an agenda behind it. These, this government, they're a bunch of serpents and snakes. So the, the, what's really going on behind the scenes is human trafficking and organ harvesting, sexual, sexual uh, exploitation of the men, women, and children that's coming over from the border over here to Arizona. And the people are coming from South America, Central America. You can't get through those borders without going through the drug cartels. <laughs> the drug cartels are all over on the border. You ain't getting over unless you pay them off. And then they got the coyotes. They'll sneak you over the border. Then somebody that live here in Phoenix Drive down there, meet them somewhere close to the border, and then bring them to the destination back here in Phoenix to be what? Traffic. And we doing those things to people that's made in the image and likeness of God. That's why the Lord said, go unto them that offend one of the little ones that believe in me. Them little children are innocent, harmless, void of malice. And you're gonna exploit them like that, man? Now we see that judgment day is gonna be no joke, man. No joke, man. The works of men shall be rendered unto them in the day of judgment by Christ. That's why, as we saying and bringing out this information, if we're doing this or we know somebody that's doing it, we need to repent or tell that person, hey, man. And brother, he read the scripture in Exodus. We going, let's get it. Exodus 21, 16. Why we teach these commandments? To condemn our people? No. We teach these commandments so that men may repent and be saved. Exodus 21, verse 16. Exodus 21, <clears throat> verse 16. And he that stealeth a man. And he that stealeth a man. That's what human trafficking is all about, especially our brothers out here in Phoenix, Arizona. That's who we preach to. What's going on across the border? Once these people cross the border, some of them being, they, they were already kidnapped on the other side of the border, or they're about to be kidnapped, thinking that they're going to get freedom here in America, and they end up in a big box truck. And then, where, where the hell are we going? I don't know. You're going to be a sex slave. You're going to be tortured. Your organs are going to be harvested from you. And then you're going to be 
thrown in a ditch somewhere covered with dirt. And our people are behind this wickedness. We got to repent. He that stealeth the man and selleth them. And selleth them. That's what <laughs> human trafficking is all about. Stealing and selling people. It's more lucrative than selling drugs. It's a multi-trillion dollar industry. And all governments of the world are partakers and behind human trafficking. Including the Biden administration, the Trump administration. Because any president that's going to truly try to stop it, they're going to end up dead. Let's read on. And he that stealeth the man, and he that stealeth the man, and selleth him, and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, I didn't steal him. I'm just transporting him for the drug cartels. Okay, read on. He shall surely be put to death. Not in this world, but in the world to come. God will judge those that's behind human trafficking. Yeah, amen is right. <laughs> He shall surely be what? Put to death. When? Because in this world society, nothing's going to be done against human trafficking. Because the government behind it. <coughs> so who's going to bring this judgment? The one that John saw is garment dipped in blood that does judge and make war. That's who's going to bring that judgment. Because God is not mocked. Meaning we can't sin against God and think that we're going to get away with it. Because you you protected by the drug cartel. you protected by the government. All powers and authorities, Christ is over. He's over everything in heaven and in earth. So you think the governments of this world and people that have friendship with the world and that's partaking in this human trafficking going to get away? God is not mocked. We can't sin against God and think that we're going to get away with it. For what? God is not mocked. Oh yeah, we're not done. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if we read it. Galatians. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead. Galatians 6 and 9, bro. My bad. Galatians chapter 6 and 9. Let's get that verse, bro. <laughs> yeah, Galatians. Because God is not a God that can be mocked. God gave us a commandment. Whoso sheddeth man blood by blood shall his by man shall his blood be shed. <clears throat> Exodus 21 16 we steal a man or if he be found in our hand the judgment is that that man is supposed to be put to death now in this world and society corrupt government that we live in they might catch a few here and there to make it look like it's like the war on drugs they might catch a couple here and there but who really behind the drugs coming into the states <laughs> the government man if you don't understand that that means you're asleep, spiritually. It's the same thing with the human traffic. The ones that's really behind it, they, they think they're going to get away. And our people that's involved in this, they think they're going to get away. But let something go wrong. You didn't pick up, you didn't do what you're supposed to do working with them drug cartels. You're going to end up dead, man. Psalm 55, 21 says, Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. So let's read this, brother. Galatians 6 and 9. 6 and 7. Oh, my fault. 6 yeah. and 7. Thank you. Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. Be not deceived, meaning we're not to be corrupted through our lusts. Read on. God is not mocked. The most high God is not a God that we can sin against and get over. God is not a God that we can mock. When God said, thou shalt not murder, we can't murder. Peace and blessings, bro. Yeah, I know that. All right, son. That. All right, bro. God said, thou shalt not murder. Don't shed man's blood. Don't get into human trafficking. But we going to say, ah, man, they the I'm going to get paid. I'm going to get rich. I'm going to die trying. Mm -hmm. Lord remembers that. God is not mocked. Read on. For whatsoever a man soweth. For whatsoever a man soweth, we want to sow the seeds of murder, hatred, violence, human trafficking, the thug life, get rich, or die. Try why? Why do you have to die getting rich? Abraham was a rich man. He didn't die trying. Because the Most High blessed him with wealth. 
But you got to get rich or die trying because to get rich, you got to break God's commandments. But you'll die trying that. That's a childish mentality, man. Meaning foolish. So, read on, brother. For whatsoever the men sow it. So we want to sow the seeds of human trafficking, organ harvesting, being part of this. You want to be a coyote? You want to work for the drug cartels? You want to murder? You want to live the thug life? You want to get rich, die trying? For whatsoever men sow it, read on. That shall he also reap. So you live the thug life, you live the human trafficking, the drug life, the gang life, you're going to die living that life. When you murdering and killing, you always what? Watching your back. All that money can't enjoy it. When you had rich men in the scriptures, they could go to sleep. Men like Solomon, David, Abraham. Folks, I bless these men with material wealth and blessings because they feared God and kept his commandments. They could go to sleep without a guilty conscience because they didn't murder, they didn't hurt, they didn't lie, they didn't slander, they didn't do violence to get those riches. But in this world, you got to bow down and worship the devil to be rich in this society. That's how it works. You can't be rich in this world and, and keep God's commandments. This is not the way that this world is set up. Satan is the God of this world that rule over the hearts of men that have, that's without the knowledge of God. And you know what the devil is all about. He's a murderer from what? The beginning. <laughs> to who? To Cain. So let's read on, brother. Galatians 6, verse 8. For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So what's going to happen? You, you're not going to retire as a drug dealer. <laughs> Who ever heard of a drug dealer that retired? Well, okay, El Chapo. I had one brother in my job. I said, hey, brother, you know, well, what you want to do with in life? I work with young brothers in my job. Hey, so what you want to do, brother, when you get out of high school? I'll be the next El Chapo. I'm like, El Chapo? I said, brother, El Chapo's in jail, bro. And guess what? He ain't getting out of that jail. He ain't in Mexico. These guys got him here. He ain't gonna get out, man. I said, you ain't never heard of a drug dealer that retired. He's all like, I am a A drug dealer never retires. They get rich and they die trying. So that's a dumb movie, man. That's a dumb song to promote amongst our people. People feed into that foolishness, man. Say they want to be the next Escobar. Nah, it's Escobar. I want to be the next El Chapo. I'm going to be the next drug dealer. Wait, wait, what happened to them people that ain't doing that life, brother? You already know. End up dead or in jail, no? Am I lying? <laughs> we know what time it is, but what? You get blinded. And we feed in. Get a taste of that money. We want more money. And then you get caught up. Man, once you in that drug cartel world, it's a wrap, man. You show to the flesh. You have the flesh reap corruption. Read on, brother. But, but, but he that saw it to the spirit. But he that saw it to the spirit, like John taught the people, do violence to no man. Be content with your wages. Exact no more than that which is appointed you. The things that Christ taught us. Love your neighbors yourself. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Which won't lead us to commit murder and adultery and fornicate and slander. Be covetous. He that sow to the spirit shall what? Shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So the choice is ours. We can sow to the flesh and give in to our carnal desires to, to partake in the place of sin that's for a season. Or we can refrain ourselves, deny ourselves of worldliness, follow Christ, humble ourselves as a child, apply ourselves in the teachings of Jesus Christ, apply the scriptures to our everyday life, and of the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. The choice is ours. And like Ezekiel said through the Spirit of God, O oh, house of Israel, why would you die a house of Israel? Why would we choose death when we can live? The world corrupts us, sister. The world corrupts us. 
So let's read on, brother. Oh, that was it on that, right? Okay, now let's go. Uh, where John, was we? John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. Thank you, brother. Now let's go back to John 1. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. So in the beginning was Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God. And Jesus Christ was with God, like we read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. So when Adam was created, he was made in the image of God and Christ. And when Adam was created in the image of God and Christ, when you saw, when Adam saw his fellow brethren and the people, or his fellow and brethren, fellow brethren saw Adam, they to see what? God. So we see one another. What's up, brother? Peace and blessings. Most high and the Lord bless you, brother. Why? Because you're made in God's image. I'm made in God's image. See? And when we look at each other in that way, you know, that's where brothers kind of get, you know, peace to the gods, you know, with their lack of understanding what even that means. Thou shalt not curse the gods, meaning the rulers of the people. Because they judge for God, they didn't judge for men. But the point is, you know, sometimes on a lower level, you know, peace to the gods, we'll see each other, what's up, king? And, you know. But greater than kings, God. God is in us. We're to see God in one another. And when you see God in Christ in your, you're not, man. The last thing on your mind is to covet what's his, to slander him, to sleep with his wife, to murder him, to see these little children. Do you know that these devils, they take these children and they torture them? And when they harvest these children's blood as they're being tortured, these wicked people on this earth take the blood and they drink it and it supposedly makes them stronger more powerful it's, it's totally sick it's sickening it's disgusting what i'm saying but it's the truth that's a big time thing in hollywood bollywood but he's all these all oh, oh yeah i gotta see this oh i want to see this movie and that movie and, oh he a lot of these people that's on high level actors, a lot of them, they partake in, um, I forgot what the endocrine or something where they, they take the blood and they drink this, this madness, man. Right? Where do they get the blood? From children. And then they torture children and then they drink the blood of these children. That's what's happening in this society and world we live in. And, and, and they get power from this. And the ones of us that, and the ones of the people that's doing it, they're these political figures in this society and world. The people we vote for, not us, but people that's worldly, voting for a lot of these people, they're behind the human trafficking. They're behind the organ harvesting. Especially of the people that's crossing the border to come here. They're not trying to give them a better life. They're being sexually exploited. Their organs are being harvested. And we talking about, oh, we can't, we can't vote for, for Trump. And then the other, no, we can't vote for Biden. Neither the whoever's president, they're not presidents anyway, they're just figureheads. The powers that be, the rulers of darkness, spiritual darkness in high places is what's ruling this world. But you thinking your vote gonna count and your vote gonna make a change. Whoever's in power, they gonna push this agenda whether straight up or craftily. Then human trafficking ain't gonna stop with the next president and neither is drugs because that's both their money makers and war, see? But when Christ bring the war, all war gonna end because all nations, including Esau, the so-called European, they are going into captivity under Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel and the prophecy is nations shall not learn war no more. See? And that's the kingdom that Christ said, I come for quickly. That's some white Jesus Christ has come out and said, oh my God, a, G a white Jesus? Hell no. It's more captivity. We're talking about the Israelite Christ, the brown Christ. See? The Christ of God. That's who's coming quickly. So let's go back to John, brother. It says, it says and the war was God. And the word was God, meaning, like Chris said, the Father in John 5, the Father and I work as ministers. Christ was one of the powers. You know? Verse 2 it says, the same. 
The same was in the beginning with God. <laughs> the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus Christ was in the beginning of the creation of heaven and earth with God. Before the world was, he was with God. Any more on that, brother? That was that one, that one. Go to John 17 and 5. Then. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry, read the next verse because yeah. that's going into the pre existence. I mean, before Christ came on the earth. Now, let's read about the word that was made flesh. Let's read that. It says, John chapter 1, verse 3. It says, All things were made by him. Oh, we, we, I'm sorry, we forgot that verse. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, if I mess up, let me know. So, read that again, brother. It says, All things were made by him. All things were made by him. So in six days, the Lord made, created heaven and earth, meaning God through Christ. It's like the Most High had the plan, Christ created. Most High, like this is the plan. The Lord, he always served God. That's why God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Lord didn't even begin his ministry and God said he was pleased with him. Well, how's that? <laughs> Because the Lord has always been faithful to his God. Always. The Lord said, he's my beloved son. My wealth. Because everything, every time anything was created in those six days, said, and God said it was good. So let's read on, brother. It says, and without him. And without Jesus Christ. Was not anything made that was made. <laughs> without Jesus Christ was not anything made that was made. Visible heavens, anything here on earth, Adam and the rest of mankind, male and female. How about the Sabbath day that was made? Not for man. I mean, not for, the, Christ said the Sabbath was made for man, not, I'm saying it wrong. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So even the Sabbath was made by Christ. So if Christ, that's why he said, well, let, let's get it. But hold that, go to John 2, 23 real quick. Because that anything that made also includes the seven-day Sabbath. Because if you say, no, not the seven-day Sabbath, then you're saying God is a liar, man. And you're upholding this world's Christianity above the scriptures. And your Christianity that you're upholding is not according to the scriptures if you deny and reject the seven-day Sabbath. So let's read that, Mark 2, 23. Oh, Mark. I'm sorry, Mark. Mark chapter 2 and... Uh, 23. 23, I think. Uh, okay. This is Mark chapter 2, verse 23. And he came to pass... I'm sorry, Mark chapter 2 and verse... Said, yes, sir. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And he said unto them. And the Lord said unto the men that were falsely accusing his disciples of breaking the Sabbath day, you know. The Sabbath was made for men. So, hold up. So what verse was there? 27. So the Sabbath was made for what? Man. So when we read in Exodus 23 and 12, and what we read in Exodus is a day of rest. And I don't think we got that point, but when you keep reading Exodus 20, it was to commemorate the creation of heaven and earth for six days and the Lord rested from their works and labor, giving us an example to work, rest from our works and labor. So read that again, bro. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. And he said unto them. And the Lord said unto them. The Sabbath. The Sabbath, meaning the seventh day Sabbath, read on. Was made was for men. Was what? Made for men. It was made for men. It was created for men. It's a day to be, a day to rest. A day to be refreshed. If the Father in Christ rested from their works and labor of the creation, should we not rest from our works and labors of whatever our job and occupation is? Yeah. Christ said, be holy as your Father which is in heaven is holy. <laughs> so let's read on. And not man for the Sabbath. Not the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, because man tried to make the Sabbath around them they had their own laws on the Sabbath you can do this on the Sabbath you can't do this you can do this you can't do this. none of that came from the Word of God it came from them <coughs> read on 
Verse 28. Therefore, therefore, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, is Lord. Stop. He's referring to himself. The Son of Man is what? Lord. Meaning what? We read in Genesis 1 and John 1. There wasn't anything that was made without him. So he's the Lord. That's why when, for example, when Lazarus was dead for four days already, the Lord prayed to the Father, then went to the burial place of Lazarus, and Lazarus rise from the dead. And what happened? Did that Lazarus rise from the dead? With man, it's impossible. But why would it be a hard thing or impossible for Christ to raise a man from the dead that was dead already for four days when he created man to begin with? What's harder to do? Create man or raise man from the dead? I mean, think about it. Raising a man from the dead, that's powerful in itself. How about to create man to begin with? That's even more powerful. And it is just as powerful to raise a man from the dead. I mean, they both go hand in hand. But the point is, Christ was able to say to a man that was dead for four days already, call his name, and the man come out of the tour, out of the burial place with grave clothes on him. And he said, look, take, take this grave clothes off him. And when the Lord did that work, and tell you that the Pharisees and the chief priests out of the scribes, they wanted to kill the Lord and Lazarus. See? So Christ was able to do that because he's the Lord and he's also what? It says, therefore the Son of Man is Lord. So Jesus Christ is the Lord because he created all things. Read on. Also. Also. Of the Sabbath. Of the Sabbath. Jesus Christ is the Lord of the seventh day Sabbath. So how is the Sabbath day done away with? How is the seventh day Sabbath done away with? Like this world's false Christianity teaches when Christ said, I'm the Lord and I'm also the Lord of the Sabbath. So why is Jesus Christ the Lord of the Sabbath? Because he instituted the Sabbath. Right? At the end of the sixth day, who creation of heaven and earth? And it was instituted for Adam and the rest of mankind. So the Sabbath day does not begin in Exodus 20. It begins at the end of creation of heaven and earth in six days. And Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. He's the authority on the Sabbath. Who are the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees is the question the Lord's disciples on breaking the Sabbath. Why would the Lord of the Sabbath, the institutor of the Sabbath, promote the breaking of the Sabbath? That don't make no sense. Why would Christ promote sin against some that he's the Lord of? Because what sin did the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ commit in plucking the ears off the corn? They didn't boil the corn, they didn't cook it. They weren't selling it. They were going through the fields and plucking the ears off the corn and eating it. And the Pharisees are like, oh, your disciples are doing something that's against the Sabbath. So the Sabbath day was never broken by Christ or his disciples. But this world teaching us, oh, we ain't got to keep the Sabbath. Then they'll say, Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. He kept it for us, so we don't have to do it. They'll be all kind of lies. They're like, what? What kind of breakdown is that? That's straight up of the devil. The devil is a murderer and a liar. And if we give place to the devil, we're going to behave like murderers and liars. And we have to repent from murder and liars because thieves, murderers, and liars shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It tells you that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and in Revelation. But the commandments are done away with. No, you know what's going to be done away with? These lies in this world by the word of God, by, by the sharp sword that cometh out of the mouth of the Lord. These lies are going to be destroyed, man. But are we taking heed and humbling ourselves? Changing through repentance. The choice is ours. So, yeah, let's read on, bro. John chapter 1, verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Yo. You pick it. 
man. Christ created. How do you know? He raised a, a man that was dead four days already from the dead. Children that were sick. You had a brother named Jairus, his daughter. I believe she died of a fever, some sickness. The Lord raised her from the dead. The disciples of the Lord, they're in the ship. A storm comes. And all the disciples fear for their lives. And the Lord quelled the storm. And they were amazed that even the winds obeyed him. How the winds obey Christ? He created wind. So if a man, if the Lord created wind, he can't stop the wind, he can't bring the wind. That's why there is no other name under heaven given to men, whereby we must be saved. But by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that sitteth on the right hand of the Father, Stephen saw standing on the right hand of God. That's the Christ we preach. Under his power and authority, we're to repent from sin and be baptized in water in his name. For the remission of sins, that we may receive the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because without the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we cannot be a new creature. And without becoming a new creature, we shall not see or enter the kingdom of God. That's what the Lord said. That's not our words. Let's get it, John 3. I'm, 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 we're not going to just say it. We can get it. But let's finish that, brother. <clears throat> John chapter 1, verse 4. In him was life. In him was life. So now it's going into, before it's going into Christ when he was with God in the creation. Now it's going into Christ while he was on the earth. Let's read that. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. So when Christ was on the earth, he was the way to eternal life. He was life. That's why he gave life. The scripture says, a bruised reed shall he not break. A smoking flax he would not even quench out. Mm. Christ came to give life. He had a sister by the name of Mary Magdalene that was possessed by seven devils. And the Lord healed her. And that sister became a, a loyal disciple, follower of Jesus Christ, and ministered unto Christ and his disciples. And she was there with Christ all the way unto the day of his dying death. On the cross, in the beginning, right there at the cross, by the end of the time he died, she stood afar off. When, when Joseph Abathea and Nicodemus buried him, she followed where he was to be buried. And then at the end of the three days, she came to the burial place, Christ, the burial place of Christ, to honor him. See? And he's like, why is he to living among the dead? When you read in John 19, the Lord actually appeared to Mary Magdalene first. <laughs> she thought that she was talking to one of the gardeners in the place where the Lord was buried. And she said, look, if, where have you taken his body? I'll take his body. Mary. She called him. Lord, she bowed down before him. She tried to touch him. And the Lord said, uh-uh, I ain't said it to the Father yet. Don't touch him. But tell my brethren and your brethren that I have risen. So Mary Madeline, she was a loyal follower of the Lord. The Lord healed her. Because he's the Lord. The Lord heals. The Lord created, he, he created the wind. So you don't think he can't stop it? The disciples marveled in the ship that the winds obeyed. The, 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 storm, the storm was calm. Peaceful waters. Now as the Lord showed them, they have faith in me. The test trials, adversities, when you go through hardness for my name's sake, just like I was here for you today, I will always be with you through thick and thin. Not one head on your head shall perish. So let's read on that. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. So Jesus Christ was life, and his life was the light of men. That's why many were drawn to Christ. That were living in darkness because they saw Christ as what he's the light. We don't. And the light shineth in darkness. So Christ preached the word of God 
right? In a world of darkness, but read on. And the darkness comprehended that. We didn't, we're not going to be able to finish it, but when in Luke 4, we were reading where Christ went to the uh, synagogue in Nazareth on the Sabbath day. Well, let's, let's read there. Let's, let's, let's finish up there. And, 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 and we're saying men love darkness rather than light. Can we read that part? Read that part. The one in John. John 1 and... Yeah, where'd you leave off? I left from 5. 5? Okay. Yeah, read that one again. It says, John 1 and 5, And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended now. There you go. Right. So now... Uh, the darkness. Yeah. And then there's another part where it says, He came to his own, and his own is him not. Oh. Uh, yeah, right. right. yeah, read the 10 verse. Then. All right. First John. John chapter 1 verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. There you go. Christ was in the world, and the world was made by him. That's why everything was subject to Christ. Even when they came to apprehend Christ, I tell you that when they first came to Christ, when they came with the lanterns and torches very early in the morning, all it was dark, when they came to get them, that they all fell to the ground. See? Read on. It says, verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Well, let's get an example. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Why did he go into the synagogue on the Sabbath day as his custom? Because he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Go ahead. And stood up for to read. So he stood up for the read. So I said, I'm going to stand up and read. Uh, I'll tell you what book to get. <laughs> get this book. It says, Luke chapter 4, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So it's delivered on to the book of Isaiah. The Lord knew what. Give me the book of Isaiah. And when he had opened so, so, the book. So, so he gets the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. All right. So what is he going to read on the Sabbath day? Show you what the Sabbath was all about. A place to what? Worship God, keep the Sabbath, and hear the word of God. So on the Sabbath day. Christ is going to make the people hear the word of God. Not his words. Because what he's going to quote is God's words. So, go ahead, brother. It says, And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. See, Christ would always teach as it is written. As it is written in the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, the Psalms, right? Go ahead. Verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So what scripture was he reading? Isaiah 61 and 1. So as he's reading that, I'm going to read this. This is Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Read that again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. So now is Isaiah speaking pertaining to himself or is he speaking of another man? Because what we're reading here are the words of the Messiah, the Christ of Israel. Let's read on. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Because he had appointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor. Well, here it says, because the Lord anointed me to preach good tidings or the gospel to the meek. So what is the poor? What does the meek mean? Those that hear the word, trembling at the word. That's of a broken and contrite spirit, remorseful for sin. That's the meek. That's the humble that the gospel, the good tidings, the good news is for. Not the proudful, not the self-righteous, not the know-it-alls. I already know that. I already know what that scripture is talking about. He, he read Isaiah 61. 
I, I used to hang out with this guy, Jesus. <laughs> Read on, brother. It says, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Read on. To preach deliverance to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the captives. He's reading Luke chapter 4. We read in Isaiah 61. The same scripture. Read on. And recovering of sight to the blind. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Read on. To set at liberty them that are bruised. And all, to, uh, to, go ahead. How was that? Read the next part. It says verse 19? Yeah. Okay, so Luke chapter 4, verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Isaiah 61 and 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So now, let's stop there. What was all them verses before talking about? Can you read those verses again, brother? Uh, uh, it says... The, it says... Uh, the Spirit of the Lord. That one from there. Okay. Yep. So Luke chapter 4, verse 16, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So the Spirit of the Heavenly Father was upon Jesus Christ. Because He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Before Jesus Christ began His ministry in Nazareth, Galilee, He was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. The Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended from heaven upon, upon Jesus Christ and it remained upon Him. After that baptism, he was led of the Spirit to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. Afterward, he began his ministry in Nazareth, Galilee. And what was his ministry all about? To what? It says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So if we're brokenhearted, suffering, hurting, there you go, sister. Those are the ones that the Lord was healing. So he, say that again. It says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So the Spirit of God was upon Jesus Christ to heal those that were brokenhearted, meaning suffering for sin. Book of Proverbs said, the way of transgressors is hard. When we sin against God, the life we live becomes a difficult life. Right. You understand? And we go through hardships, adversities, tough times, sorrow of mind. Those are the ones the Lord came to heal. Go ahead. It says, to preach deliverance to the captives. Christ said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. See, the people thought that that meant, oh, Christ, does that mean we're going to be delivered from captivity of the Romans? No, they ain't talking about that. Not yet. See, what he was talking about is, he that committed sin is the servant of sin. So, when we're lusting, that's a sin. When a man is lusting after another man's woman, that's a sin. Because the Bible said, thou shalt not covet that neighbor's wife. But once that lust is conceived, it bringing forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringing forth death. That's what it tells us in James chapter 1. So when we sin, we lust it, we become the servant of sin. That's what Christ came to deliver us from. Amen. The bondage of sin. The Lord could have delivered the children of Israel from the bondage of the Romans, but if we're not, res if we're not restored to a sinless state, we're going to commit sin and be back in the captivity. Under the same Romans or any other nation that the Lord put over us. Go ahead. It says, and recovering of sight to the blind. So those that are physically blind, spiritually blind, the Lord is coming to give sight. Go ahead. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are what? Bruised. That's why he became bruised for us. We were bruised. We sinned. We suffered. The Lord said, Father, I'm going to suffer for them. All right. Even though... They have sinned and the penalty is death. I'm that without sin. I come in a volume of a book that's written of me to do that will. Yeah. I, I will offer my body. I, I will be that lamb of God that you have provided. All right. I, will I will take their sins upon myself on that cross and that's I will bear their sins. I will be bruised for their iniquities and sins. That that's what the Lord was about. Go ahead. Verse 19. To preach. The acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord is going back to the year of Jubilee. In the oh, land of Israel, <laughs> every 50 years, yeah. if you was a servant, if you was a, a servant, you were in servitude, you would set be set. If you had debt, your debt was forgiven. Amen. You would be like, yeah, the 50th year. I'm a free man. Well, Christ came to save us from the bondage of sin. 
Because when we break God's commandments through murder, committing adultery, fornication, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, we're taken captive by Satan at his will. But when we repent in Christ, we recovered ourselves from the snare of the devil. Now we're being set free. Go ahead. Verse 20. Luke chapter 4, verse 20. And he closed the book. So he closed the book of Isaiah. Read on. And he gave it again to the minister. And he gave it again to the minister. And sat down. And sat down. In the eyes of all of them. In the eyes of all of them. That were in the synagogue. That were in the synagogue. Were fasting on them. Fasting on Because he just wrote a scripture that they spoke about the Messiah and Christ of Israel. The ones who were in the, in, what did you say, the pig, they were fasting, you said? No, they were in the synagogue hearing Christ teach this. Okay. Go ahead. Like what we're doing Verse here. 21. And he began to say unto them. And he began to say unto them. This day. This day. Is the scripture fulfilled in your ears? Is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? Okay. Meaning, I am the Messiah in Christ that Isaiah spoke about. I come to heal. I come to heal the brokenhearted. I come to restore sight to the blind. I came to deliver those that are in bondage to sin. That scripture today is being fulfilled in your ears. So he's reading a scripture that's pertaining to the Messiah. And he's pinning it to himself. Let's see how the people react. It says, verse 22. And all bear him witness. And all bear him witness. And wonder at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. So they couldn't deny. Wow. He Look at the way that this man is teaching. Look at these gracious words that's coming out of his mouth. But we're going to see him now rejecting him at the same time. Many was reject. That's what we're going to read. Read the next part. It's, it's a, a powerful scripture. It says, that is a powerful scared. scripture. And they said. And they said. It's not this Joseph's son. Exactly. Wait a minute. How can he be the Messiah? This is that's Joseph's the, that's son. That's the devil doing that to them now. Because they knew who Joseph was. He was a carpenter. And they know him. So they're like, wait a minute. That scripture in Isaiah that he's quoting, that's talking about the Messiah, the Christ of Israel. Oh, okay. How can he be the Messiah? This is Joseph's son. Read on. Verse 23. And he said unto them. And he said unto them. She will surely say unto me this proverb. So the Lord was already seeing where their mind was going. So he said, I'm going to say it before you say it. Uh, I'm going to say it before you say it. Read on. Physician. Heal thyself. Physician, heal thyself. Because Christ is claiming to be the Messiah in Christ of Israel. They're like, wait a minute. This is Joseph's son. His father's a carpenter. He's a carpenter. We know his brethren. We know his sisters. We know his family. How can this guy be the Messiah? So they're now rejecting him. So now the Lord is seeing that they're rejecting him. He said, surely you will say unto me this proverb. Meaning, before you say it, I'm going to say it. The Lord discerned. What did he say? Physician, heal thyself. So in other words, they're like, look, if you're going to heal, heal right here. Healing begins right here. In other Jesus words, that, they want show us a miracle here. Show us, heal right here. Read on. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum. Whatsoever we have heard that thou has done in Capernaum because the Lord was doing many miracles in Capernaum. Okay. So they're like, okay. What about us, Pete? This is your hometown. Let's see you do some of this, some of this cooking, home, the home cooking here. So they, they, he's like, look, come, the works that you did in Capernaum, do them here. But they're doing it in a way where they want to see a sign. They're, they're rejecting him. So it's, it's more like when in John 6, when they came to Christ, and when the Christ fed the multitudes with bread from heaven, they were like, look. Moses gave us bread from heaven. Look what you got. The scripture says it's written. Moses gave us bread from heaven. You got to show us something better. So a lot of times when the people would ask the Lord to perform a miracle, it's because they didn't believe him. And that's the spirit that they're coming in. They're rejecting Christ. So they're saying, physician, heal thyself. I mean, if you're going to heal, heal right here. The works that you did in Capernaum and healing people, do it right here so we can see. Show to us that you are the Messiah. See, read on. It says again, whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Do here in thy country. Wow. Physician, heal thyself. Okay. These words also reverberate, were echoed when he was on the cross. He healed yeah. others, but he can't save himself. Go ahead. Verse 24. And he said. And he said. Verily I said unto you. Verily I say unto you. No prophet 
is accepted in his own country. A pro no prophet is received of his own country. What does that mean? In other words, that I I'll get a scripture to go with that in Mark 6. This is Mark 6 and 1. And he went out from thence, and he came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And Mary and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by him? Is not this the carpenter, the he son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and of Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So they were like, we know this guy. How can he be the Messiah? We know his family. So then it says, But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. See? And mean? among his own kid and his own, in his own house. So meaning, a prophet will never be received of his brothers and sisters, of his own town and of his own country, but he will always receive, be received by people that's not of his own country, by, of his own uh, city, town, family. Because yeah, they, they'll always look at you like, you're my brother or you're my friend. Yeah, How can you be this, the Messiah? Yeah, you're like, you know who you are. Exactly. So go ahead, brother. So let's go back. Verse 25. Yeah. So then uh, let me just actually okay. keep reading that in Mark 6. I gotta get going. All right, yeah, all right, peace and bless, bless, bless you. I love you guys. All right, so my name is Anita. Please keep in your prayers. All right, okay. I'm sick. All right. I gotta go to the hospital. I've been okay. fighting for seven years. God bless you. Keep you. All right. Thank God you. God heals you. Thank you. Peace and blessings to you. So I just want to keep reading in Mark six. Then the next verse says. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. A prophet would always be received, but not in his own country. That's why Elijah, there were many widows in Israel. Unto none of them was Elijah sent, but unto a woman of Zidon, in the city of Sarepta. And that woman, she believed that Elijah was a man of God and the word of truth was in his mouth. And among his own kin. So a prophet will always be revered and respected, but not among, in his own, amongst his relatives, and in his own house. That's why the Lord, at one point, his own brethren didn't believe in him. And they wanted him to perform a miracle in Jerusalem, so that maybe that they saw the reaction of the people of Jerusalem believe on him, maybe that will push us over the fence. And the Lord said, the world cannot hate you, but be it hated, because I testify of it that the worst are of the evil. So he was telling his brethren, y'all could go to Jerusalem anytime, any place, and you're going to be received, but not me. If I go to Jerusalem, I'm going to reprove the world of sin. I'm going to speak against the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees. I'm going to teach against the false doctrines of men. I'm going to teach against murder. I'm going to teach against serving other gods. I'm going to teach against the traditions of men that the Pharisees teach. I'm going to be hated and killed, but you can go anytime. So let's read on, brother. Oh, I, I, I was reading. And he would dare do no more mighty works, save that which he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about other villages teaching. So the Lord only did a few miracles in Nazareth because they didn't believe. So he's like, I already know these people. Uh, before you say it, I'm going to say it. Y'all going to say, heal right here. The works you did in Capernaum, do right here before us. But the way they were asking, they were tempting. That's why a lot of times the Lord said, evil and an adulterous generation seek at the sign. See, they, they got to see some great miracle for them to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, where the words he spoke wasn't proof enough. Him raising the dead wasn't good enough. It's like they needed one miracle after another, after another, become a believer. When Christ said, blessed they that believe in me have not seen me yeah. or, or touched me, but they believe in me in faith. Yeah. Thomas wouldn't have believed in that he was risen from the dead and he touched me. And he said, now I believe. The Lord told Thomas, well, you believe because you saw me. Blessed they that have not seen me. That would be us in this time. It's all about faith and believing in the word. But let's read on, brothers, uh, and, and let's finish up this book. Okay. Luke chapter 4, verse 24. And he said, Verily I said unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. Verse 25. 
But I tell you of the truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. There were many widows in the days of Elijah. In Israel, among the children of Israel, because Elijah was an Israelite, there were many widows in Israel during the time of Elijah. Read on. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months. So for three years and six months, the Lord brought a drought upon the land of Israel, a sore famine, because Ahab, he married a woman of another nation of Zidon, and he, she, he brought in the worship of Baal into uh, the land of Israel, which is going into the, uh, the God of rain and crops. <laughs> so the Lord rendered them according to their works and brought three years of drought in six months in the land by at the they tell us in James 5 Elijah prayed by the will of God for a drought and the drought came so then during this drought the Lord is going to provide for Elijah in a widow's house but this widow was not a miserable you know it says when great famine was throughout all the land so there was a great famine all throughout the land of Israel read on verse 26 but unto none of them was Elijah sent. But Elijah wasn't sent to them. Why? Because people act like when the prophets spoke the word of God that they were received of the people. Not all the time. See? So read on. Save. Save. Unto Sarepta. So, so he was sent to us. All right, man. Take care. Take care. All right, man. So he was sent unto a city called what? Sarepta. Read on. A city of Sidon. A city of what? Sidon. That's where Jezebel was from. Ahab married Jezebel, uh, uh, I think he was the king of Zidon, or prince of Zidon. So, there were many widows in Israel during the time of Elijah. None of them was Elijah sent to bid unto them. A widow in Sarepta, a city called Sarepta in Zidon. Why? Because a prophet is not received of his own country. So the Lord's going to provide food, bread, food, and water from a brook. And once the drought really hit, he was sent to this widow's house. She only had a small amount of oil and flour left. And she was at her last end of flour and oil. She thought she was going to make her last meal for her and her son and then die. She said, this is it. I got the famine sore. There's no bread. There's no wheat to harvest. There's no water. This is my last flour, last oil. We're going to have our last meal and die. And I said, no. Make me bread from your last of your oil and flour. Give me food. And then you'll eat too. So the Lord provided miraculously a miracle of a continual supply of flour and bread, I mean flour and oil from the jars that she had the flour and oil in throughout this drought. See? And then, while Elijah staying with the woman, his widow's house, her son got very sick and then he died. And then Elijah prayed over him and the spirit was revived and it came back to life. And at the end, the woman said, this is what she said. Or oh, you can get 1 Kings 17. Uh, it's the last verse. No, 1 Kings. Yes, 17. 17, yes, sir. So as the Lord is bringing out this information, Israel very, very, very aware. Yeah, that's true. There weren't many widows in Israel. How come the Lord didn't send Elijah to any widows? Why did he go to... to to a woman of another nation to bring out the truthfulness of a prophet is not received of his own country See, of his own family of his own house and to bring out just because we're chosen of God don't mean that we're not to have true faith in God See, and be about repenting and humbling us remember Christ was sent to, to preach the gospel to the what? the meek the broken spirit, remorseful for sin. What attitude did they have? Joseph's son, the carpenter. How is he the Messiah? So, so what's all right? 
before you say it, I'm going to say it. Surely you will say this proper on it. Physician, heal that son. Whatsoever that has done in Capernaum, do right here. And then the Lord said, what he's saying. So let's read what she said about, about Elijah, the widow, as opposed to the, his own country and kinsmen and friends that he grew up with in Nazareth, what they said about Christ. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 24. It says, And the woman said to Elijah, Now, by this I know that thou art a man of God. See, the widow of Zidon said, Now I know that thou art a what? A man of God. Were the Israelites in the, in the synagogue in Nazareth saying that? No, they were rejecting it. Read on. And that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. So the widow acknowledged that the words that Elijah spoke were the words of truth. When, when Christ quoted Isaiah 61 pertaining to the Messiah and saying that he's the fulfillment of that scripture, they begin to what? Reject his words. So the Lord said, I, I got something. I gave you an example where many widows were in Israel during the time of Elijah. Until none of them was... She was Elijah sent, but unto the widow of Sarepta, city of Zion. And not only that, she acknowledged Elijah as a man of God and the word of truth being in his mouth where we're going to read here in Luke 4. They did the complete opposite of what this woman of another nation did. That's supposed to be humbling in our ears. Man. Go ahead. Oh, that was on that. Let's finish up in Luke. It's getting dark now. Luke 4, verse 26. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sarapta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. So Elijah was sent unto a widow's home, even though in his own country, among his own people, there were many widows amongst his people. He was sent to a widow. Uh, far away in a place called Zidon and the Lord, the Lord provided yeah. verse 27 and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet so there were many uh, men in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet there were many lepers so leprosy was like a skin disease yeah. and none of them was cleansed saving Naaman the Syrian so there were many lepers during the time of Elisha in Israel, but Elisha wasn't sent to any lepers in Israel, but to a leper among another nation, the Syrians. And then he healed him. Read on. Verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. So when they heard Jesus Christ teaching, how they're rejecting him, when other nations accepted him or blessed him of the prophets, they started to get angry at him. Because their sin is being exposed and their sin and ungodliness is making them look bad in the eyes of other nations that God chose us to be over. Read on. Verse 29. Luke chapter 4, verse 29. And rose up. So the people in the, where Christ grew up in Nazareth, they all rose up. Read on. And thrust him out of the city. So they grabbed Jesus Christ and they took him out of the city. Read on. And led him unto the brow of the hill. And led him out to the brow of a hill, like a cliff of a mountain, you know, up there in South Mountain. So you can go on them trails and you look down and say, whoa, yeah. and it goes down. They took Christ that far because they hated him. Read on. Whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. They wanted to throw him off the cliff. Read on. Verse 30. But he passing through the midst of them, when his way. So that he passed through. That he passed through the midst of them when his way. Why? Because his hour is not yet. Done. They wanted to kill him, right? But the Lord said, no. Not today. Walk through the midst of them. And even though they wanted to kill him and throw him off, it's not happening. Why? Because even in John 7, they wanted to kill him during the feast of time. My hour is not yet come. It comes at the time appointed of God. My death comes in God's time. 
no one can get in the way of it. So finally, our Lord was crucified, but that was during the preparation of the Passover. Because Jesus Christ is our Passover. Remember John the Baptist when he was baptizing the children of Israel? And then the people came, he said what? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb, meaning this man is going to take away our sins. Because he's calling the Lamb of God because the Passover Lamb that we read about in Exodus, when Israelite, when our forefathers, we're the children of Israel, by the way, brother. We're the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel that God delivered out of slavery in Egypt. That's our history. That's something to be proud of. Damn, we the Israelites of the Bible. We're the people of Moses. We're the people that God delivered out of slavery in ancient Egypt. And when we left Egypt that final night, remember, we had to kill the Passover, the lamb. Are you familiar with that? The Passover? Yeah, yeah that's an Exodus 12. So remember, well, on the night of the Passover, we had to get a lamb of the first year. It had to be without blemish. That's symbolic of Christ being without sin. And then we killed the lamb. Uh, on, on, we killed the lamb, and then we put the blood of the lamb on our doorpost. And then the angel came over, and when the angel, which was Christ, saw that the blood was on our doorpost, then the angel passed over. Spare me. Right. That's our history. When you read in that chapter, tell us that the Passover was a sacrifice. So that lamb had to be sacrificed, and the blood had to be uh, put upon the doorpost of our home because that night we were going to be delivered out of bondage. Yeah. So then now... Christ came later on in the history of the world to deliver us from what? The bondage of sin. There you go, bro. That's why Christ said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So a lot of our people are like, oh, so that means you're going to set us free from the Romans? You're going to take the Romans down and we going to rule? No, it's like, no, that's, not the, that's not the bondage. Not yet. Not yet, because Christ is coming back to deliver us from the hands of our enemies, like it's telling us in Luke 1 then first we got to be restored to a sinless state. Because if the Lord delivers us from the bondage of being in captivity under the nations, then we're not restored to a sinless state. What are we going to do? We're going to continue in sin. God's going to punish us. And we go back to the captivity. So let's say, I got a better thing. How about if you believe in me, and you repent and follow me, you will become born again. If you become born again, even if you die in the faith of me, I will raise you from the dead to be in the Father's kingdom. Christ said, unless a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. So, how do we become a born again? We believe in Christ, repent from our sins, follow the teachings of Christ. Because if we follow Christ, what are we going to stop doing? See? If we truly, yeah, brother, if we follow Christ, are we, are, a man that follows Christ, is he going to speak with another man's woman? Are we going to, am I, if I follow Christ, am I going to steal from you, brother? Even if I see you walking down the street and your wallet fall out on your money. If I follow Christ, I'm Hey, brother, look, man, you dropped your money, man. You know why? Thank you. Because I got to love my neighbor as myself. When I see you, I see myself. But even greater than that, what just as beautiful, I see God. I see Christ. Imagine we looked at each other that way. No more jail. <laughs> no more murder. Show so Matthew 7 and 12, brother. We can end crime tonight, bro. Yeah, bro. Yes, sir. It's right here. You can read it with us, bro. Show him Matthew 7 and 12. This is Matthew 7 and 12. It says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye what that man should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law of the prophets. This is the law and the prophets. And the prophets. So you see what it's saying? For whatsoever, for whatsoever, uh, therefore all things whatsoever, thank you, brother, ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. But this is the law of the prophets. So everything that the prophets of God ever spoke, everything that the law teaches us is to love your brothers and sisters. How I want to be treated, I should treat you. Yeah. So when I see you, I should address you as How you doing, sir? Yeah. How you doing, brother? Not, you know, like being disrespectful, condescending. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I'm gonna look at you like I have an earthly father. Yeah, you remind me of my father. You have a son? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, okay. See, so we're, look, we're family. Recently, we all have one common take. He was the father of 12 times. And we're to love, we're to treat one another as we want to be treated. So that eliminates adultery, murder, slander, covetous, lying. If I know my brother's my son, I'm not going to do anything that's going to hurt me. Because I'm hurting myself. Remember one of them. If I hurt you, I'm hurting the whole community. I'm hurting those that's close to me. So that's why Christ is Christ. Now, get, uh, you got a scripture. Uh, yeah, sure. The two greatest commandments. What was it? Yeah, you know, sure. Uh, this one in Luke, I do one in Mark 12. Mark, Mark 12, 38. So I'm at Mark 12, 38. Yeah. I'm not sure this real quick is when we just talking about how uh, to go one and all yeah. Like the brother was bringing it out. So this is. This is uh, uh, it says, two, the two greatest commandments because they ask. Uh, it says, this is uh, Mark 12, 28. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceived that he had answered them well, asked him. They asked him a question, right? You see what question was this? Which is the first commandment of all? He's asking, which is the first, Lord, which is the first commandment? Oh, right. What's the most important first of all commandments? Because there's a lot of them, right? Yeah. So what would be the first in priority? Check it out. And the verse, verse 49 says, and Jesus answered it. He's going to give you an answer, right? Yeah. It says, the first of all the commandments, the number one is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One God, one Lord. Right. Yeah. And this is the second one. No, it's still the first, it's still the first. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, it's still the first. Okay. It says, and let's continue, right? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So that's the very first one you gotta love the most. You gotta love God with all, with everything you have. Yeah. Sincerity. And if we, to add to that point, to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that means the law where it says, thou shalt have no other gods before him, him. we're going right. to keep it. The law where it says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, yes. we're going to keep it holy. You know, the law where he gave us, look, don't eat the swine's flesh. That's in Leviticus 11. That's it. And so if we love God, we're not going to eat swine's flesh. Right? Okay. So now, we go to the second one. Okay? Like the brother was bringing it up. The second one is like, namely, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. So that means, like the brother was bringing it up, if I love you, brother, I'm not going to steal from you. I'm not going to sleep with your wife. I'm yes. going to respect you. Because that's brotherly love. Amen. But in, in order to get that type of love, we got to love God first. Amen. So he can show us the kind of love we're going to have to, to one another. So again, in the second one, it's like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It says, There is none other commandment greater greater than greater. this so this is like like the number two commandments yeah. get that love from God with all everything you have you learn that love and you will transmit that love to your neighbor in this case your brother your, your, your sister your wife your, your children that kind of love godly love that's what it's talking about that kind of love so that's the first and second, once we start there, yes. all the other commandments fall apart. All right. Because all right. yes. if, if you love God, you're not going to murder. If you love your neighbors yourself, you're not going to commit adultery. When you read in Genesis 39, when Joseph, which is our forefather, an Israelite, was in Egypt, an Egyptian woman tried to seduce him to lay with her. And you know what he said? Yeah. How can I sin and do this great wickedness against God? So he knew if he slept with her, not only is that adultery, but I'm also sinning against God. Because God is the one that brings man and wife together. Now, we try to get in there and we try to deal with adultery. It's not just adultery, we're sinning against God. We serve the other God. The night person told us that. Yeah. Genesis 39 and 9. Genesis 39 and 9. It says, there is, this is uh, Joseph. It says, there is none greater in this house than I, 
neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. So he's talking about his the, the guy in charge of the whole thing, but he's like his second, his yeah. right hand man. Okay. okay. It says, because thou art his wife, how can I do this great and wickedness and sin against God? Because his wife is after him, trying to lay with him. Yes. Like he knows. He knows that's yeah. already what God was, what was teaching him. Yeah. So he, and, and those, that, was, that didn't stop her there. She kept continuing. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to get him to lay down. Yeah, she, she kept trying, trying, trying. trying. Yeah. yeah. So eventually, she tried to grab him, hey, lay with me. Yeah. And he, had, he got out of his garment and yeah. he ran. But she said, look, I got his garment. This man tried to rape me. Oh, no. What? He threw him in jail. But you know what? Because he suffered for righteousness sake, God was with him in jail. Yeah. He delivered him out of jail, and then he came second in power in Egypt. Yeah. So when there was, he had a dream that there was going to be, or he interpreted the dream that there was going to be a famine in the land. So he prepared uh, the, the, the people for the famine for seven years, yeah. and, be, and then he was raised in second power to, to, to really save everybody at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so the Lord was, ble he blessed them. That, yeah, she kept coming and coming and coming at them. Yeah. So that means how we got to endure. Sometimes we can shut Satan down and not give him the sin, but we got to know that. He doesn't stop. He's a roaring lion. He don't stop. And when he stops, it's only for a little time. You got to get ready because he's going to come back another time. When Christ is touched with the devil for 40 days, afterwards he got hungry, Satan tried to get him Man, the stone will be made bread. Christ said, No, man, should not live right better alone. If I had a word that was in the this way, that way, this way, Christ kept sister the devil and said that Satan will be for a season. Then he coming back the next season. <laughs> so that's why we gotta be vigilant and sober and always always be prepared. Let, let, uh, before you go, I wanted to read this yeah, okay. Romans 13 and 8. Yeah, let me just show you. Uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. Okay. What's your name, by the way? Chris. Chris. Nice to meet you, man. My name is Saadri. Nice to meet you. 13 and 8. You from around here? Yes, I am. Yeah, we teach out here on Saturdays. Right? Yeah, good time. Good. Thank you. This is Romans 13 and 8. It says, Or no man anything. So, Oh, no, nothing to know. The only thing we're indebted to is this. You know. But, you love one another. That's, that's what we're teaching. You know. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the love. You pick any love. If we love your brother, you're doing it. Don't make it hard to feel my love. We keep in God's commandments. There's a whole bunch of commandments. We love you. But if we have hate in us, we're going to break it. Yeah. Verse 9 it says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery. See, so we love one another until we commit adultery. Yeah. You know? Thou shalt not kill. If I love my neighbor as my son, am I going to burn? No. Yeah. Thou shalt not steal. If I love you as my son, I'm not going to steal. Yeah. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Witnesses. With you love me as you love yourself. Don't slander against me. I say, yeah. Them two guys out there, not that you're going to say that, but somebody might say, hey, them two guys out there, they did this, this, and that. We're not going to make false accusations. Yeah. Thou shalt not cover. We're not to cover anything that is our neighbor's, whether it's your neighbor's wife, his material possessions, his own, anything. Is what we if I cover what you got, I might, I might want to try to follow you. Yeah. I'm going against you, or I might make an accusation against you, put you in jail, now I got you. It says, and if there, and if there be any other commandments, there's other commandments, you know. It is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In the next one, love worketh not ill to his neighbor. So when we love one another, that love is not going to work any type of ill behavior one toward another, you know. Therefore, love is fulfilling. So to fulfill and walk in God's commandments, we love God, like a brother, that was a good point the brother made out. Once we learn how to love God, then we can properly discern how to love one another. Because a lot of people claim, yeah, brother, I love you, man, yeah, man. But, okay, 
trying to rob you, you take something from you, they're jealous towards you. You know, so we have to learn love according to the word of God. Because once we love God, then I can now I can learn how to love my wife, love my children, love my people, love myself. Because once you learn that God loves you, you're his chosen. Love yourself. You're not gonna let negative thoughts in your mind you. You're not gonna put negative things in your mind. You know, you know what I'm saying? Drugs, bad food. See, we're gonna nourish and cherish ourselves. And then when you're gonna learn to nourish and cherish your people. And then that's where the healing begins. Because what's out here in the streets? It's a bad area. Human trafficking. Prostitution. So we learn this love here, brother. That's what we're the end. That's what we need. It starts with what it's like. Learning these scriptures, walking in them, yeah. being an example of them. The world becomes a better place. Christ said, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify them. Yeah, just this last one here, brother. This is James 5 and 16. It says, Confess your faults one to another. So we got to, that means repent. Repent from sin. Just leave sin behind and repent. Confess and, confess and sins to the Lord. It says, And pray one for another. We got to like, just bring it out. Brother, the Lord, because you're my brother and I love you. I got to pray for my brother. Because we all go through, we all go through things. Yes. So we pray for one another. It's part of it and it's powerful. It says that ye may be healed. It says heal, heal of sickness, sins that you're going through. But that's the praying that's important. To pray for one another. It is we're going through. He hear our prayers. But we gotta be humble. Yeah, okay, humble. Humble in is sincere when we pray to the Lord. It says, it says, the effectual fervent, fervent, when you pray, brothers, pray, brothers, sincerely, it says, that ye may be healed, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, what it say? I pray that much. So it's important, so it's, it's, like, it's, a, it's, it's a big thing. Powerful. Is praise and power that he can hear us. He can hear our prayers. He knows what we're going through. Oh, yes, he does. Yeah. So that's what that's what point I want to make. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want to add to this one before, okay. before we end it, bro. Okay. This is Matthew 18. It says, at that same time, okay, the disciples of the Jesus say, check out this question and ask me, who is the greatest? Jesus called the little child, okay, the little child on the hand, sent him to the visit. Yeah. These yeah. are the disciples of the Lord, they ask him, who's the greatest in the kingdom? Tell me a little bit. So, right. so what is it in the child that we can learn that could be a blessing? What did you say? They don't hold grudges. You can see two little kids fighting, right? Five minutes later, that's right. That's right. That's right. We, yeah, that's right. We're so corrupted, we hold grudges. I don't yeah. like that. I don't like what you said. I don't like it. Yeah. We hold those grudges, man. We're children. They, 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 they're not corrupted. You know? Yeah. So, then, so then it says, so he says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, the brother made the point about we gotta be humble, teachable, humble himself as his little child. 
same as the greatest in the world. So to make it to the kingdom, you gotta be humble, faithful, teachable, void of malice, just like a child. If we can have those attributes and qualities within us, we're on the path that he's going on in the last one. But the point is, one of the key things the brother said was, you gotta repent. You have to cheat. Remember he said, except thou be converted. What does converted mean? Cheat. Put off sin. One sin at a time. It's never happened overnight. We've been living a life with sin. Been one step at a time, one layer at a time. And then we start to turn, and then we start to grow in the Word of God. Next thing you know, you put this sin on, and that sin on, and this sin on. And that you're spiritually growing in faith and humility. And now you're growing out of faith. The Word of God. And the Lord can make you a powerful man in this world. Look at it. You're going to be out here for the Lord's teaching. I can tell you, man, look, this is so tender about that. I mean, you got to solve the world to, to make it have faith in God. You know, you know so. You know, the Lord will, will turn our life around and help us turn up. One, one more, one more. You <laughs> can say that. Go ahead. I know. He said, when he says, we got to put sin away, like he said, but we got to do it. Like, we start like today. Because we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait to put our sins out. Yes. I'm going to read this real quick. This is the Apocrypha. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5. Verse 7 says, Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Let's not wait to turn to the back to the Lord. It says, It says, And put not off from day to day. So people will say, Oh, I'm going to repent tomorrow. No. I'm going to repent next week. Let's, let's, let's not wait. Because it says, There's, there's a reason why we should not, we should not do, be doing that. It says, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. So, he's a Lord, he's a merciful God, but he's also, if, if the people kill you and, 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 not, and not change, suddenly he comes. Now it's going to be too late. But he, now it's going to be too late. It says, it says, for the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security, thou shalt be destroyed, because you're not repenting, waiting. It says, and perish in the day of vengeance. What's the day of vengeance? It's the second coming of God. So, let's not wait to turn to the Lord. Let's, let's, let's change today. Let's, 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 let's be a new preacher in Christ. We gotta get, we gotta get it. This picture, we gotta get about, about this, these words. Yeah. yeah, so we come out here, we usually try to get out there every Saturday. Yeah. Around 4 30, 5 o'clock. We're here till 12. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 man. Hey, hey, listen. It's not coincidence you came today. Yes. You put me in your path. You put me in your path. Well, it's, read it, right? well, it's, 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 it's him. Because all yes, glory goes to all the glory goes to him. Right. He's the one pushing this path. Yes. We will just we right here. Yes. <laughs> so this is not for easy. Not, not, not such thing. Yeah. Oh, 
yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, yeah. I do. That's, 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 that's what we go by. Uh, man, let me show you this over here. Yeah. Yeah, this is ourselves as a child. 
faithful, humble, teachable. Learn these scriptures and pray to God to help us. And when we are in humble spirit, the Lord can raise us from low to high. Christ said that if we humble ourselves, we're going to be exalted. But if we exalt ourselves, we're going to be humble. So humility and faith of a child goes far in his walk in Christ. So, like I said, we try to get out here, especially now the weather's warming up. We yeah. try to get out here every Saturday around 4.30. Yeah. We're usually here until dark, so anytime you're in the neighborhood, free to come on by, spend some time with us, brother. Yeah. Yeah, every Saturday. Yeah, oh, yeah, here, here we have this too. Yeah. This is part of the Bible. Right. Yeah. yeah, this is part of the Bible. Uh, yeah, some, these, these were books that were taken out of the original Bible. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's a good book too. So let me write them off right now. So you're a little familiar with the Bible, then. No, I, I, I just read it a lot. I've never gone to the Oh, I got it from my friend here, too. Oh, God, I got to know God. I think I'm going to die. I don't know. Okay. You for Phoenix? You for Bible? Yeah. Alright, let me end this.